This is video number one of the gilding course made by Rinaldin. The complete course is made up of 11 videos plus an introductory video. The first phase of gilding is applying the plaster. The plaster is needed to close the wood's pores and prepare a smooth surface for the following processes. The frame looks like this after the plaster has been applied. Some rabbit skin glue has to be mixed to the plaster so that it sticks better. I'll start by explaining how to prepare the rabbit skin glue. The glue is in a granular form. It has to be soaked in water for a night until it swells and has a gelatin-like appearance. The proportion is of 100 grams for every litre of water. For this demonstration, I put 20 grams of glue in a container. I now add 200 grams of water while weighing on the scales. I stir the water and the glue so that the glue mixes in well and then I let it soak for a night. There will be a gelatin-like mixture after a night. We'll have to heat it to about 50 degrees to make it more liquid to mix it with the plaster. We therefore have to hold the container in another pot with warm water. It's best if the pot is of cast iron or terracotta so that the temperature remains constant even if the heat is momentarily turned off. Now let's move on to the plaster. Firstly, the plaster has to be sieved to ensure that it doesn't contain any lumps or impurities. Also, the rubber skin glue has to be sieved. For this process though, the glue has to be liquid and has to be at about 50 degrees of temperature. I now transfer the amount of glue I need in another container. I add the plaster to the glue. I place a spoonful of plaster at a time without forgetting to constantly stir as to avoid small air bubbles from forming. There isn't a precise amount of plaster to put. I stop when I see that the plaster isn't being incorporated by the glue anymore. Only at this point can the plaster and glue be mixed together until the mix has the same consistency as it did before. At the end, any leftover glue can be stored in the fridge or freezer to avoid it from spoiling. When it'll be needed again, it'll have to be heated once again in a pot with warm water, like before, to make it liquid. Rinaldin provides plaster in 1, 5 and 25 kilo packages. It's an aired plaster, which means that it's a hydrated calcium sulphate, which has been particularly ground and purified. Its characteristics of impalpability and softness to the touch make it completely suitable for gilding. The glue comes from rabbit skin waste and is provided by Rinaldin in 1, 5 and 25 kilo packages. I now proceed to the application of the plaster to the frame. If you have brushes with metal rings, you have to pay attention that the plaster doesn't get in contact with the ring as it will otherwise oxidize. The oxidization would create some bubbles in the plaster, which would be visible after having applied the final sheet. The plaster has to be kept constantly warm during this procedure in the pot with warm water, but it must never boil. The first layer of plaster is completely absorbed by the wood. To apply the next layers, you have to wait until the plaster is mostly dried, otherwise it won't stick as easily. 
You can continue with the second layer when you can see that the plaster has become opaque. You realize that with every layer the drying time will decrease and the color of the frame will become whiter. It's always best not to try and accelerate the drying process artificially by putting it by a heat source as this could provoke cracking. At least five layers of plasters have to be laid for the traditional gilding. For the modern gilding, just three are enough. Ronaldin suggests these brushes, which don't have the metal ring for applying the plaster. Twenty-four hours after having applied the plaster, we can start with the sanding. A perfect sanding is important for the following steps and for a good final result. An abrasive sponge can be used for this step or a wet rag, but not too wet, or simply some sandpaper. The abrasive brush, which adapts itself to the shape of the frame, is suitable for simple surfaces like this one. Sandpaper can be useful to smooth down some points such as these. Renaldin provides the following tools for sanding plaster. Sandpaper with three different grain sizes. The biggest grain is needed for the first rough phase. Sandpaper with a medium grain is needed for obtaining a smoother finish. An abrasive sponge with three different grain sizes. The thinner and more flexible sponge is suitable for frames with a rounded shape. Also a damp rag is more than suitable for sanding. The rag has to be frequently soaked in water as the plaster tends to dry it quickly. You have to pay attention to not wet the plaster too much, otherwise the small decoration details will flatten. Furthermore, be careful not to round the corners too much. When you're finished sanding, it's best to go over the frame with a cotton ball soaked in alcohol to clean it well and ensure that there isn't any plaster dust left. The application of the plaster on a frame with an embossed design could make the shapes a bit rounder and therefore lose some of the decoration's details. In precise, the parts that are hollow could have filled up with too much plaster. In this case, a reparation work has to be taken into consideration. This process is done with special tools, so-called repairing tools. Before we can start with the repairing tools, it's best to pass a damp rag over the areas which have to be worked on so that the plaster becomes slightly wet, which makes working with the repairing tools easier. Then, choosing the most appropriate tool, you delicately remove the plaster which has covered and rounded the decoration. Rinaldin provides these repairing tools. On the top part of the photo you can see a complete tool and in the lower part the tip of every tool is highlighted. You can find all the gilding products on the website www.rinaldin.com